Hey guys, this is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net. Welcome to this vlog and uh, today, quick vlog, just a little piece of advice. Just a little piece of advice. I wanted to give you advice about rhythm and I uh, encountered a lot of, uh, through my instructional career as a jazz guitarist and jazz instructor, a lot of beginning students trying to play jazz rhythm and say, oh, now I'm not bound to my... Right, I'm not bound to this so I get to mess things up the way I want and they start to play all these clunky rhythms or you know uh, anticipation or delayed there's no it's like well this is not a free-for-all you should really aim to, to produce something that swings and that has a good rhythm even if you don't have a, a template for rhythm so here's my advice it's gonna be a super short vlog because well number one I want to give you a few quick tips but also number two I want to make sure I shoot a a proper uh, lesson like a tool you've seen the toolbox series right on the website so toolbox lesson about rhythms how to comp rhythms but my advice here is even though you have the freedom to play at uh, rhythms other rhythms don't <laughs> so that's the beginning of advice what i mean by this furthermore instead of being just negative it's stick to something that grooves and stick to it for an entire chorus. So to play 12 bar blues, well, play 12 bars, the same rhythm, the same rhythm, you know, like drummers, ting, chick, kidding, chick, kidding, chick, don't start to blah, 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 just do the same rhythm. Uh, let me just give you a quick example of what not to do. Uh, and that would be maybe counterintuitive to playing um, a good rhythm for a soloist or a singer or whatever. I'll play a blues in F. All right, you ready? Don't do that. A one, two, get three, four. Yeah, don't play like that. Even if the, the chord shapes I'm playing are might be right, like. I went against the grain. I played too many chords. I played anticipation, delayed, whatever, whatever. So here's now the tip on what, what to do. Number one, get in the mindset that you have to play some really repetitive rhythms. Hard to say for a French guy. Repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Repeat the same rhythms. As in, almost like a groove. Listen to a James Brown song and go, oh, the guitarist does that. It's a two bar rhythm. He repeats it through the whole song. So get in that zone. I'll give you an example. Um, let's use a metronome on two and four. Also a great tool, by the way. So say a good MIDI, like a medium, like that's 72. So that's 144. So that's a, the two and four click. Just start with something very basic, like a Charleston rhythm. A one, a two, a uh, uh, two, a three, four. Yeah, went against my own advice. Two, get three, four. Two, two, da, 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 two get three, four. Two, two. Yeah. So you see. I said play the same rhythm, so mostly, you know, I varied a lot, like, ah, I varied it. But you see, my, my groove was pa, pa, tu, tu, ta, ta, tu, tu, ta. So now here's the question. You play this and you find it boring. So if you can't make a Charleston like that sound, how do you expect to play more complex rhythm and have them sound? You can't. So you need to first do the bare bones. So that the Charleston is a good one to start with. It's dotted quarter eight, right? So... Just make sure you're in the pocket with that. Um, another good one to have in your pocket as well is just playing half notes. Just you can play on the first beat. Just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Right, that that's good. But also, if you play just half notes, one, two, three, four. that you're starting to get in a groove right so charleston's half notes and you can even make up a rhythm that you like 
and then that you start to put some variations on it but make sure you have the, the groove in sets uh, last tip for more advanced player uh, again uh, i do this in my vlogs or right where i go this is where you begin and then here's where you can take it to another level and advanced players do this so advanced players um what if you started to use the charlestons and i've talked on this to, about this in other videos and you take the charleston and you start to displace it you move it in the bar so if i grab the same rhythm that would be charleston on the beat on beat one one two uh, one two three four two three four one two three four right what if you take this and eighth note to the left so you anticipate your charleston one two one two three four and one two three four same um, but delayed delay it by an eight note a one a two a one two go three four one a two three four one a two three four one a two three four one really really foundational stuff so you can do the same with your charlestons you can um you can give uh, charleston Eighth note to the left, eighth note to the right, and you can displace it all sorts of ways. You can do your half notes the same way. You just do one and three, and then you displace it. That's for advanced players. Also, I saw a workshop with a um, trumpet player. Was it Jeremy Pelt or an anyway, extremely well-known American jazz trumpeter that's maybe my generation, a bit older, but not, not that much. Uh, and he just gave this workshop to, you know, the Thelonious Monk competition. And it was like, guys, you're just all over the place pick a groove and these kids were just pick a groove stick to it and the drummer just started to stick to the same sort of groove instead of being all over the place and uh, uh what's his name i forgot but he said your generation's problem is you haven't found your groove yet and once you do and you stick to it it's going to be a killer it's going to be like boom so the guys did that and they were just they were playing a standard but then they were sticking to the same sort of groove or backbeat so that's the advice. Even if you're attempting to play standards in, in an old way, even if you're trying to play bebop or whatever, you have to know that it's not a free-for-all. It's not playing any rhythms anywhere, anyhow. It's that really important to stick to something, make that sound, and then later on it becomes sort of a trick. So it reminds me of actually working with my students on the, on the Barry Galbraith stuff the, at the comping studies. So say, uh, what's that? Two, three, the four, and two, two, the three, two, 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 see, so you get the bottom, again, the deep bottom, dude, that's how many times now, the deep bottom. There's the rest, there's a, a turnaround. With the G. That's a blues and F, actually. Um, yeah, like mines, I guess. So you see that even in a written study, the same repetition of the same rhythm happens so often, so often, and so often. So, uh, yeah, I think I made my point. I'll let you guys go before I go to the 10 minute marks. So, uh, thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed these video lessons, I publish more every week on this YouTube channel. Uh, look forward to my, my toolbox on rhythms, on copying rhythms, probably next week fingers crossed maybe uh and also please be sure to visit the blog jazzcatarsons.net slash slash blog and if you're interested link in the description below uh, please book a call with me we can sit down have a quick chat on the phone or zoom and just see how i can become uh, your mentor your coach because i have this coaching program i take my students through several interesting hoops and see if we can take your playing to the next level so i'll see you soon on the website and on this youtube channel jazzguitarlessons.net improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Take care. Thank you.